Good afternoon. Uh, today uh, I'm presenting my annual uh, report for 2022. Uh, and uh, this report sums up uh, the main activity activities of our alliance uh, uh, in the, the last uh, year. Uh, 2022 uh, was a pivotal year for our security. Russia's illegal war against Ukraine is now entering its uh, second year. Sorry. Uh, President Putin uh, made a big strategic mistake uh, when he invaded uh, Ukraine. He expected uh, Kiev would fall within days and the whole of Ukraine within weeks. But he underestimated the steely resistance of the Ukrainian uh, people. He thought uh, he could break NATO unity, but NATO allies are standing strong and united and providing unprecedented support for Ukraine. And he wanted less NATO, but he has got exactly the opposite, more NATO. In response to Russia's illegal war, Finland and Sweden decided to apply for NATO membership which will double the length of NATO's border with Russia. At the NATO summit in Madrid last June, all allies took the historic decision to invite Finland and Sweden to join. Both countries have addressed Turkey's legitimate uh, security concerns and delivered uh, on their commitments under the trilateral memorandum agreed in Madrid. Turkey is uh, now ready to ratify Finland's membership of NATO. I welcome that decision and I look forward to the Grand National Assembly ratifying Finland's accession before the upcoming Turkish general election. I also welcome that the Hungarian parliament will vote on Finland next uh, week. The most important thing is that both uh, Finland and Sweden become full members of NATO quickly, not whether they join at exactly the same time. And I will continue to work hard to ensure that Sweden becomes a full member as soon as possible, because the accession of Finland and Sweden will make them safer, our alliance stronger and demonstrate that NATO's door remains open. President Putin wants a different Europe. He sees democracy and freedom as a threat, and he seeks to control its neighbors. So even if the war in Ukraine ended tomorrow, the security environment has changed for the long term. Putin's uh, invasion last year was a shock, but it was not a surprise. It was the culmination of a pattern of aggressive action. And in response, since Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea in 2014, NATO has implemented the largest reinforcement of collective defense in a generation. So when Russian tanks rolled into Ukraine, we were ready. Within hours, we activated our defense plans from the Baltic to the Black Sea. We put 40,000 troops under NATO command with a significant air and maritime presence and doubled the number of NATO battle groups uh, from four to eight. At the same time, NATO allies have provided Ukraine with significant support, supplying advanced uh, weapon systems and ammunition to help Ukraine defend itself and regain territory. We are also in the process of agreeing uh, new capability targets for the production of battle decisive ammunition and engaging with industry to ramp up production, to support Ukraine against Russia's aggression, and for our own defense. NATO is increasing the protection of critical national uh, infrastructure, including undersea cables and pipelines. We have set up uh, an undersea infrastructure coordination cell here at NATO headquarters, and established a joint NATO-EU task force. At our summit uh, in Madrid last June, NATO allies agreed a further fundamental shift in our deterrence and defense, with new plans assigning specific forces to, to defend specific allies. High readiness, more stocks, and more pre-positioned equipment, 
and even stronger command and control arrangements. We agreed uh, a new strategic concept, the first in a decade, to guide our lines in an era of strategic competition. It identifies Russia as the most significant threat to our security, along with the ongoing threat of terrorism, and makes clear that China challenged uh, our interests, security and values. 2022 was the eighth consecutive year of increased defence spending across Europe and Canada. Last year, defence spending increased by 2.2% in real terms. Since Allies agreed the defence investment pledge in 2014, European Allies and Canada have spent an additional 350 billion extra on defence. Many Allies have also announced significant defence spending increases since Russia's invasion. Now these pledges must turn into real cash, contracts and concrete equipment. Because defence spending underpins everything we do. Since 2014, Allies have increased defence spending and we are moving in the right direction but we are not moving as fast as the dangerous world we live in demands. So while I welcome all the progress that has been made, it is obvious that we need to do more, and we need to do it faster. At our summit in Vilnius in July, I expect Allies to agree a more ambitious new defence investment pledge. With 2% of GDP as a minimum to be invested in our defence. In this new and more contested world, we cannot take our security for granted. It is our security that underpins our prosperity and our way of life. Our latest uh, polling shows that 82% of people across the 30 NATO allies believe it is important that North America and Europe uh, work together for our shared security and 61% agree that NATO membership makes an attack from a foreign nation less likely. NATO has enabled Europe and North America to live in peace for almost 75 years. But today's world is as dangerous as at any time since the Second World War. The years to come will be challenging and NATO must continue to rise to the challenge. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. Uh, Swedish Radio. Here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Secretary General. What does it mean in concrete terms that uh, Swedish NATO membership is a top priority, as you said yesterday? Uh, and the second question, how included is Sweden for the NATO future plans for the Baltic Sea? Uh, do Finland is approaching NATO membership faster than Sweden? Well, I didn't get the last question. Uh, how does it mean in concrete terms for the NATO plans for Baltic Sea that uh, Finland is approaching NATO membership faster than Sweden? So first of all, uh, I, I, I'm absolutely confident that uh, also Sweden will become a full member of this alliance. Uh, second, it is a top priority for me, uh, meaning that I really believe that it will be good for uh, NATO, it will be good for Finland, it will be good for Sweden, it will be good for all of us uh, to have Finland and Sweden in as quickly as possible. That's also the reason why I worked hard to get the agreement uh, 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 last year, which was an historic uh, decision that all NATO allies, also Turkey and Hungary made, to invite Finland and Sweden. And since then, since, uh, since uh, uh, June last year, we have had the quickest accession process in NATO's modern history. Because we have to remember that Finland and Sweden applied in May, although in June they were invited, and since then uh, uh, Finland and Sweden has had a, a, a totally new position in NATO because they ha now have the position as invitees, meaning that they sit at the NATO table. Uh, we integrate in, uh, Finland and Sweden more and more into NATO's civilian and military structures, and this integration process will take some time with military planning, with capability targets, and, and that integration process has not been postponed uh, by uh, uh, the fact that the ratification has taken a bit more time than we hoped. So, so the military in in integration goes on, 
regardless of, in a way, uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, Hungary and, uh, and, and, uh, and Turkey has not ratified, because part of being invitee means that you can be in, in, integrated into NATO's military structures, including uh, interim capability targets. So the military planning, the integration process, uh, is something which is moving on, uh, uh, not delayed by uh, 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 the ratification uh, process. Um, um, uh, second uh, is that, uh, for me, this is a top priority, meaning that I spent, uh, so I did what I could together with, with, Prem, with, with President Saul Ninisto, with, uh, at that time, uh, uh, Prime Minister Madalena Andersson, uh, uh, and, and, and with the new government in Sweden, we are continuing to work together closer to ensure uh, the agreement, uh, the invitation, and now the uh, integration into NATO's civilian and military structures, and then uh, the ratification. So far, 28 has ratified. I went to Ankara, uh, I think it's now uh, uh, three, four weeks ago. Uh, we had a good meeting with uh, President Erdogan. That was the meeting where he made it clear that he is ready to or Turkey is ready to ratify um, Finland, uh, um, and I welcome that, uh, that we now see uh, uh, progress on the ratification of Finland, and hopefully that will happen very soon. Um, then on Sweden, uh, President Erdogan in the meeting agreed uh, to restart the process, uh, and also in the meetings of uh, what we call the permanent mechanism, uh, where Finland, Sweden, uh, Turkey um, uh, meet, and they met uh, under my auspices here at the NATO headquarters a few days ago. Uh, and that also then led to the formal announcement of the uh, 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 decision to move on with the ratification of Finland. Uh, but of course, in uh, that meeting, we also then are able to address how to make progress uh, on the ratification of Sweden. And we'll continue to meet. I spoke again with uh, with uh, President Erdogan on Friday, uh, and we uh, again agreed uh, to continue the consultations and, uh, and the meetings uh, to ensure that we can also make uh, progress on the ratification of, uh, of uh, Sweden. Then I spoke this morning with uh, President, uh, no, sorry, with, uh, with uh, the Foreign Minister of, uh, of Hungary, uh, um, Petri Sjarto, and, uh, and, and he also confirmed that uh, there will be a vote uh, on the 27th of uh, March uh, on, uh, in, the, in the Hungarian parliament on the ratification of Finland, and we'll continue then to work on progress, making progress on the ratification of, uh, of uh, Sweden. Interfax Ukraine, lady with the red scarf. You have a microphone there. Oh, thank you, Anna. Uh, news agency, Ukrainian news agency, Interfax Ukraine, Irina Sommer. Follow up on NATO Ukraine Commission. Secretary General, is it mean that we can see from now on that such kind of meeting will take place regularly, on the regular basis, and even that participation of the president, Ukrainian president, Mr. Zelensky in Vilnius, also will take place in this format, NATO Ukraine Commission. And second question is, don't you think that time came to denounce NATO Russia Rome agreement which established also NATO Russia Council. Thank you. NATO allies worked for a meaningful dialogue with uh, Russia for many, many years. Russia has walked away from that dialogue, so that's not uh, functioning. It, 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 it is not possible to have a meaningful dialogue with Russia uh, when they are conducting a legal war of aggression against uh, uh, Ukraine. Uh, but we used the NATO Russia Council uh, 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 up till the invasion. Uh, we have to remember that we actually met in this building uh, 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 in January, uh, just a few weeks before the invasion, to try to uh, convince and to try to use all uh, diplomatic and political channels to prevent uh, uh, President Putin, Russia, for, from uh, uh, implementing to, to follow through on their plans to invade uh, Ukraine. So, so the, the NATO-Russia Council was an important instrument uh, in our efforts to try to establish some kind of meaningful dialogue with uh, Russia. We used it to try to prevent the invasion of, uh, of Ukraine, but since the invasion, uh, uh, this has no meaning. Uh, uh, we cannot have any meaningful dialogue with a country that is uh, uh, responsible for an uh, illegal war of aggression uh, against the neighbor uh, Ukraine. Um, so, so we don't have meetings, of course, in this council now. Then when it comes to the NATO Ukraine, um, uh, Council, uh, we, uh, uh, this is this is an established framework. I have the mandate to convene it. 
uh, I have in respect for the, the issues that uh, uh, Hungary has raised, I have uh, not convened that for some time. Uh, but now I will continue to convene the, the, the meetings of the, of the NATO Ukraine uh, uh, Council, uh, uh, the Commission, uh, sorry, uh, and, uh, and I will uh, start with a meeting at the foreign ministerial meeting. I have not planned any more meetings, but of course this will not be a uh, uh, one-off uh, one event. We will continue to have meetings. Uh, when it comes to the, um, the summit, we have not decided uh, finally on the formats, but I have made it clear that uh, I will invite uh, President uh, Zelensky uh, to the summit. Uh, exactly in what format we will meet, that uh, has not yet been decided. Bloomberg. Thank you so much, Natalia Drozdjak from Bloomberg. I just want to follow up on the, the question about Sweden's ratification. Do you still expect Sweden to be ratified by both Turkey and Hungary um, by Vilnius? And then secondly, on um, the question about uh, MiG fighter jets, Poland and Slovakia, Pledge. What impact do you expect this to have on the battlefield? And have any allies expressed concern about these deliveries, um, especially with regards to escalation? Thank you. Well, on, on Finland, uh, based on what has been announced both from uh, uh, Hungary and Turkey, the two allies that have not yet ratified the Finnish uh, accession protocol, uh, I, I expect that uh, uh, they can become members uh, before the, um, the Turkish election, uh, because uh, uh, because um, Finland, uh, sorry, Hungary has made it clear that they will vote uh, on this in the in the in the in the Hungarian Parliament on the 27th of March. Uh, so that's a base what I say on what they have uh, publicly said and also told uh, told, told me, uh, and also. Uh, um, Turkey uh, has made it clear that the plan is to uh, ratify before the Turkish parliament uh, goes into recess ahead of the Turkish uh, election. Of course, I cannot guarantee on behalf of national parliaments. At the end of the day, it's national parliaments that make the, the decisions. And I've been a parliamentarian and also prime minister myself. I'm always very careful not speaking on behalf of parliaments. Parliaments are sovereign bodies. They make their own decisions. But at least that's what has been announced. And I based on those plans and those announcements, uh, Finland will be member very soon and before the uh, uh, Turkish uh, elections or before the Turkish parliament goes into recess based on what they have said. Um, then uh, uh, on Sweden, uh, I will not give you any exact dates, uh, but I will just tell you that this is a top priority uh, and I will work hard uh, to ensure that also uh, Sweden uh, becomes a full member uh, and that the ratification process can be finalized as soon as possible. That's the reason why I, I traveled to Ankara. That's the reason why I also spent uh, some time in, in Stockholm, uh, in Helsinki, and also convened the, the, uh, the um, trilateral uh, permanent mechanism uh, here at, at NATO and will continue to engage with all these countries to ensure that we have the quickest possible ratification also of, uh, of, uh, of Sweden. Answer, gentlemen, glasses, yeah, thanks. Yes, sorry. Um, <clears throat> uh, Secretary General, in the Mediterranean, uh, migration is reaching a level unseen since the 2015 crisis. Uh, Italy has recent, recently linked this phenomenon with an intentional rational destabilization strategy. And uh, as you know, the strategic concept states a 360 degrees approach to security and see the MED as a critical theater. Now, the question is, do you accept that the southern border can be at risk because of migration used as a hybrid weapon? And is uh, NATO ready uh, to do more in, uh, in that area? And secondly, if I may, um, would you be available for a second mandate, I mean, for a prolongation again of your mandate, maybe. Uh, uh, first, uh, on the south, um, well, NATO has a significant uh, presence in the Mediterranean uh, and in the south uh, to address instability, to fight the terrorism, and we also support efforts of the European Union to deal with the uh, illegal migration. We, for instance, have um, uh, uh, a naval presence uh, in the a G and C uh, to help to implement the, um, the agreement between Turkey and uh, the European Union uh, on uh, illegal migration. I've been there since, uh, for, for several uh, years. 
We're also working with partners um, like uh, uh, Mauritania, uh, uh, like uh, Tunisia and others, to help them build their defense and security institutions to stabilize their own countries. Uh, that's to address the root causes of the uh, uh, migration challenge. Uh, so we are working in many different ways. Uh, and of course, we also see that uh, we see uh, increased Russian presence in, what we, in, in the South or in Africa, uh, and not least with the Wagner Group. Uh, so uh, I think that it just highlights that NATO doesn't have the luxury of choosing either uh, uh, to either focus on one or the other uh, challenge or threat uh, we face. We need to be able to deal with all of them at the same time. Of course, they are in different nature and, and different in intensity, but NATO has to deal with them at the same time. Uh, also, a lot of what we do on critical infrastructure is also related to the south. There are cables, there are undersea infrastructure also in the Mediterranean. Uh, but of course, uh, NATO is a, a military alliance. We have our tools. Then the European Union, national uh, nations have uh, other tools. Uh, so we don't, we don't have all the tools to address all the issues related to migration, but we support the efforts of, uh, of the European Union and, uh, and individual allies in different uh, ways, and we'll continue to do so, and also step up our uh, work with partners, for instance, uh, or in Africa, uh, and also in Iraq. I met with the Iraqi, Iraqi foreign minister uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, we have a presence there of a training mission to help Iraq to stabilize their own country. And that's also a way to address the root causes of the, of the uh, uh, illegal migration. Uh, Imedi, Georgia. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Secretary General, two questions about Georgia. Uh, first, um, uh, as we are waiting for Vilnius summit uh, uh, this um, summer, and for more support uh, from uh, NATO, what can you tell us more about it and overall um, evaluation of 2022? Uh, and also, can you comment on recent developments in uh, Georgia? I mean, um, presentation in Georgian Parliament, uh, foreign agent draft, and in two days it was voted down. So. Can you comment on this? Thank you very much. Also, I welcome the decision by the Georgian parliament to vote down or to withdraw uh, the draft uh, law on foreign influence or foreign uh, agents uh, because it's uh, incompatible with uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, values and the protection of fundamental uh, freedoms. So I welcome uh, that uh, uh, this proposal was withdrawn and then uh, not supported by the uh, uh, parliament uh, in Tbilisi. Uh, I encourage uh, 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 Georgia's uh, political leaders uh, to work together on reforms urgently needed. Uh, and of course, NATO has also worked with uh, the government of Georgia to implement these reforms uh, uh, to strengthen democratic institutions, to strengthen democratic control over the um, security services, uh, and, and also uh, to fight uh, corruption. Uh, the Georgian uh, people have made it very clear that they want a democratic, prosperous uh, Georgia that is integrated into the Euro-Atlantic uh, region, and NATO will continue to be a partner to those aspirations. Okay, we'll go to Icelandic National TV. Your mom Chris, from Icelandic National Television. Uh, you've talked a lot about Ukraine. Understandably, the focus of the alliance has been, has been there for the, in recent months. Are you keeping focus on Russia's activities in the high north? Um, and how will the membership, I mean, the eventual membership of Sweden and Finland change the dynamic on the northern flank of the alliance? So Finnish and Swedish membership will strengthen NATO in many different ways. Uh, first of all, it will strengthen the whole of NATO. Uh, and because Finland and Sweden has, uh, have uh, capable armed forces, well-trained, well-equipped, modern uh, uh, armed forces, uh, and, uh, and we have worked together with Finland and Sweden for many years. Uh, uh, they have naval, uh, land, and air forces which are highly capable and will help us also to increase our presence, our awareness, uh, also in the high north. And of course, both Finland and Sweden are Arctic nations. Uh, they know how to operate under Arctic conditions, uh, and it will also not least increase our ability to uh, to utilize the airspace uh, in, the, in the high north uh, and, uh, and to operate across the borders uh, uh, in, uh, in the Nordic uh, region. Uh, so yes, that is important for uh, the high north, for whole NATO, but of course also, for instance, for the Baltic countries. If you just look at the map, 
you will see that reinforcement, uh, the protection of the Baltic region, uh, will be very different, and, uh, and, uh, and it will be in a much better place to do that with Finland and Sweden in. And therefore, I welcome the fact that all of us have invited them, that Finland will uh, very soon be ratified, based on what has been uh, announced from Ankara and from uh, Budapest, and then we will, I will continue to work hard for the uh, quickest possible ratification of uh, also uh, uh, Sweden. Uh, then the High North... Uh, uh, has mattered for uh, NATO for many years, uh, and therefore we have a significant presence there. We have several allies, uh, 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 which are Arctic nations, including uh, Iceland. Um, uh, uh, we have presence uh, uh, in Iceland uh, with uh, uh, um, um, uh, NATO planes. Uh, um, Iceland uh, is important also when it comes to monitoring uh, uh, following the uh, Russian military movements up in the high north, their, their submarines, their ships, their, their, their planes. And allies are also now investing in new modern capabilities, including advanced uh, fifth generation uh, fighter aircraft. That will significantly increase our uh, uh, capabilities when it comes to monitoring and surveillance uh, over uh, what's going on in the high uh, north. Uh, more ships, uh, we have more exercises. And I just, last week, and I went together with uh, uh, President Ursula von der Leyen and the Norwegian Prime Minister, Jonas Gahr Støre, to uh, one of the gas facilities, the gas platform, Troll uh, platform in the North Sea, which is important for Norway, for the Nordic region, but of course also for uh, energy supplies to Europe. 10% uh, of Europe's gas supplies uh, comes from that uh, one uh, platform. Uh, so, of course, when NATO also is stepping up what to do to protect critical infrastructure, that is also uh, very much about the high uh, north. Uh, so, uh, yes, high north is, has been, will continue to be of great importance for NATO. Uh, let me also add that climate change will make the high north even more important. The ice is melting, uh, it's possible to operate there uh, uh, more uh, throughout the year, and, uh, and that will also increase the strategic importance of the high north. Thank you very much. I know there are more questions, but this is all we have time for now. However, uh, you can pick up a hard copy of the annual report on your way out uh, and uh, hope to see as many of you as possible uh, at the annual media reception. Thank you. Okay.